What's up everyone, Brian here from Exact IT Solutions coming at you with another Guess Who Got Hacked and Attacked this week. It is October 15th, 2020. It is uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month and uh, I appreciate everyone hopping on and checking out our latest update, especially the series that we put out every week of all the companies and businesses that got hacked and attacked throughout the week because there are cyber attacks every single day. Not all of them make the news. And mostly none of them make the uh, the national news or however you see it on TV. So we br built this channel and we bring you this information to highlight how prevalent and how big of a problem that cybersecurity and cyber criminals have become for businesses. So all that we ask, if you uh, enjoy this channel, if there's anything in this video that entertained you, that intrigued you, that made you think, that educated you in any way, the only fee that we ask is that you hit the like button down below and that you subscribe to our channel. And also remember during the month of October, anybody who subscribes to our channel will be automatically entered in to win a $200 Amazon gift card. Of course, you have to be 18 or older to win that. And good luck to everyone who subscribes to our channel. So here we go. Without further ado, let's get into who got hacked and attacked this week. All right, so the first one we're gonna start with is uh, a law firm, Safarth Shaw, that was hit by an apparent ransomware attack. Um, the Safe, Safarth Shaw fell victim to a crippling malware attack over the weekend, the global law firm disclosed earlier this week. According to an official statement, unauthorized activity was detected by the company's monitoring systems on Saturday. Um, if you watch my channel here, you know that I always say that attackers attack over the weekend or at night when nobody's in the office. On Saturday, October 10th, 2020, Safebarth was the victim of a sophisticated and aggressive malware attack that appears to be ransomware. The company said, we understand that a number of other entities were simultaneously hit with this same attack. Who are those other companies? We don't know. Our monitoring systems detected the unauthorized activity and our IT team acted quickly to prevent its spread and protect our systems. Although Safar stressed that it found no evidence that client or internal data was removed or accessed, many computer systems were encrypted, forcing the IT team to shut them down as a precautionary measure. Now, if you also watch this channel, I also highlight all the time how businesses love to come out in the beginning and say that no data was stolen or exfiltrated from the network. And then two or three months later down the road, after the investigation is complete, we find out that this actually was not the case and that data was actually stolen. And this is almost 98, 99% of the attacks that we've seen in the last six months where the data is taken first. Um, but companies still like to come out early on in the game and say data was not taken. Uh, the article goes on to say the latest update suggests that the company has not been able to bring its systems back online. However, it is coordinating with the FBI to tr track down the culprits. Good luck with that. Our team continues to work around the clock to resolve the incident, Safar said on October 13th. As reported earlier, we have found no evidence that any of our client firm data was accessed or removed. Yeah, the, they haven't found the evidence yet, but the evidence is there. You just haven't had time to get to it yet. Um, headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, the AM Law 100 firm serves more than 300 Fortune 500 companies with a fleet of over 900 lawyers spread across 18 offices worldwide. So this is a pretty big hit. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna uh, have a field day with the data that they get out of this. And if Safar thinks that they were spared and only hit with ransomware and data wasn't stolen. They have data uh, for over half of the Fortune 500 companies. Do you know what kind of treasure trove and how A, valuable that data is on the dark web? And this goes to an important point for attorneys. We work with a lot of attorneys here at Exact IT, and attorneys have to be really mindful of cybersecurity. Um, they may not be in uh, a, um, a regulated industry, um, but they might be have a client in a regulated industry and I guarantee you if they have 300 of the 500 fortune 500 companies they have clients in regulated industries uh, which means by default they are regulated 
Um, so we'll see what happens here. It'll be interesting to see what happens, but this is another example of another firm who uh, was hit by ransomware by cyber criminals. And not only that, in the article, and I love reading these articles because you glean so much information by, the, by what people say and what they give, they actually stated that other companies were hit. So I'd love to know who those other companies were because it's not out there yet. It's not in the forums and it's not in the news. So moving on, a big uh, book reseller, uh, Barnes & Noble, cyber attack, may have exposed personal information of shoppers. Uh, Barnes & Nobles has fallen victim to a cyber attack which resulted in unauthorized access to company networks and exposure of customer information. The bookstore giant disclosed earlier this week. The attack also affected the entire Nook system and customers still can't sync recent purchases to their e-readers or access ebook content on their devices. Oh no. Um, so you can't read any books. It really stinks. And you can't go to the bookstore because they're closed because of COVID. And, you know, man, what are we going to do? So anyway, um, systems outage began October 10th, which was Saturday. And customers quickly turned to social media platforms inquiring about the sudden disappearance of their Nook library. Um, and then it goes on to say at the bottom that they say, firstly, to reassure you, there's been no compromise of payment card or other such financial data. These are encrypted and tokenized and not accessible. The systems impacted, however, did contain your email address and is supplied by you, your billing and shipping and address and telephone number. So although there's not enough data to suggest exfiltration happened, the possibility can't be ruled out. Um, if it's confirmed, the attackers could also have viewed customer transaction history, such as purchase information related to products purchased on Barnes & Noble online. Um, which, you know, a lot of times when we see these types of things happen, these uh, people that are part of the database then get targeted with phishing attempts from Barnes & Noble. This is a very easy way, say I just bought a book called Think and Grow Rich. If I bought that book uh, recently from Barnes & Noble and now these attackers know that, what if I get an email that says, hey, why don't you rate Think and Go Rich? And if I don't fully look over that email and, I, and it is a spoof from a hacker who's trying to get me to go to a website so he can infect me, th this is a very easy way for hackers to target hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people from this database that they know that they are Barnes & Noble's customers and depending on what information they have, they could start sending phishing emails to these, uh, to these uh, customers of Barnes & Noble. And this is just one example of how hackers use these types of attacks to further future attacks. Um, the article finishes out here by saying until further notice, Shoppers are advised to look out for any unsolicited emails. Despite these drawbacks, the company expects that Nook will soon be fully operational. Uh, and then they go on to say, we expect Nook to be fully operational shortly and we'll post an update when systems are restored. Thank you for your patience. And this was yesterday on October 14th, so four days into it, and they're still not back online yet. So moving on. Um, cyber criminals steer nearly one terabyte of data from a Miami-based international tech firm. So um, this article highlights that the database of sensitive financial and personally identifiable info and documents from IncomeX were leaked on a Russian language hacking form after a ransomware attack. So um, the company hasn't really come out and fully, I don't believe fully admitted that they've had a ransomware attack, um, but it goes on to say that an investigation uncovered leaked data belonging to IncomeTex, a very large value-added reseller which provides technology products and services targeting Latin America and the Caribbean. The leaks also occurred on September 14th and September 20th when hackers dumped it in two parts on the forum. So far, the release was a collection uh, called Internal Audit with a size of 16.6 gigabytes, while the second release is titled Finance at ER, totaling 18 gigabytes. So according to the report on the Cyber, uh, Cyber News website, based on folder names, the most recent data comes from July 2020. 
The data appears to have been stolen as a result of a ransomware attack. Hackers promised to leak the more interesting data, which at a later time, according to the report, a Russian language note left along with the leaked data alludes to hackers waiting to see if the company will pay up before releasing the rest of the data, which likely will be more full credit card information, a treasure trove for hackers, according to the report. Um, so, you know, this is interesting. Um, you know, it says that Incomex took decisive steps to address the situation and protect their systems upon learning about the leak and is working with a third party cybersecurity experts in the investigation of what happened. Uh, the company also notified law enforcement and is in the process of letting affected parties know about the leak as appropriate. So this is just another example, again, that um, not only is the leak significant and the volume of data that was leaked, we're talking almost 30 gigabytes, but the sensitive contents as well. Um, it, it's not as simple uh, as just like what we saw maybe in the Barnes and Noble where it was transit, like what, you, what books you bought, email, um, address, names. So we're talking about passport numbers, license scans, um, payroll information uh, that was all lost from this company. And it, these can cause significant damage to, to the users of the service. Uh, so you can only imagine that the company is eventually going to be held liable for this through things like class action lawsuits and other government sanction, you know, regulations or, or fines against their company. Um, so moving right along here, uh, this is outside of the U.S. I don't normally cover too many companies outside of the U.S., but this was a controlled access provider, a facility services provider, Spotless, over in um, uh, Australia where they were attacked with ransomware. And the firm has operations in both Australia and New Zealand um, and through various brands. And they're headquartered in uh, Fitzroy, a suburb of Melbourne. Spotless is owned by the Downer Group and provides services to, to defense, business, senior living, education, government, healthcare resources, water, power, transport industries, uh, education, etc um, and they have engaged experts to help them uh, with the ransomware um, but this is another uh, example of a company that is downstream in the supply chain they pro provide controlled access to buildings and things like that and that's a huge hit for 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 cyber criminals um, based on the customer base that this client has. Um, so it's really important that you understand the vendors that you're working with and you vet them and you ask them the same questions that your cybersecurity insurance form asks you. Like, what are you doing for data protection? What are you doing to protect your systems uh, when we give you data and you're in charge or you have custody of that data what are you doing with it? What is happening with the data? And are you doing, are you handling it and, and securing it correctly? And the other interesting thing is that you want to look at with vendors too is a lot of times vendors are going through this process as well of being audited and, and certified in certain things. Ask them if they have any certifications. Ask them if they have anything to prove that they follow a cybersecurity framework or have cybersecurity processes in place. Um, and then the last one we're going to look at here today is um, uh, is about election news. This really isn't about who got ha hacked and attacked, but because it is Cybersecurity Awareness Month and we are heading into the elections, I will bring everybody some any, any information that's out there regarding um, election and any potential cyber attacks against election systems or or uh, state and local governments. So it says the um, CISA and FBI observed APT groups targeting state networks related to U.S. election systems. Um, the article goes on to say that the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency and the FBI issued an advisory after spotting advanced persistent threat actors exploiting multiple legacy vulnerabilities combined with newer privilege escalation vulnerabilities. 
Um, and this goes on to, and I talked about this earlier, a Fortinet VPN gateway, VPN um, a gateway device vulnerability that has been known for a long time combined with a Windows logon vulnerability. Uh, I will link to the video where I talk about this in more detail, but FBI has warned again that they know that uh, threat actors are gaining access to networks and they're staying there. That's what the persistent threat um, uh, de designation means, means that you are getting into the network and you're staying there and you're able to connect again, again, and again. Um, and that's what's happening here. And if you use a Fortinet VPN, get it up to date. If you have Windows Active Directory servers, get them up to date. They will, once you patch them, these vulnerabilities go away and the hackers have nothing to exploit and they can't get into your system. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Who Got Hacked and Attacked. We had several companies, several large companies that were attacked. So if you learned anything, if you liked anything in this video, please give us the big thumbs up down below. If you're so inclined and you made it this far in our video, please hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. And not only that, it makes us want to put out more videos like this. And if you want to work with Exact IT Solutions in any way, shape, or form regarding IT or cybersecurity, head over on to our website, uh, xitx.com. Click the uh, Contact Us button, fill out the form, and let us know how we can help you or let us know if you have any questions and we'd be happy to uh, have someone reach out and help you with whatever cybersecurity challenges you may be facing today. Um, we're going to move on here today, folks, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, everyone.